All right, guys, it is Friday, and we're gonna start doing some trusses. Um, we've never done dropped purlins before, so I think it's gonna take uh, a little bit longer. Um, at the end of this, I'll be able to tell you whether I like this or the purlins on top better. I kinda already have an idea in my head which I'm gonna like better, but we spent all day yesterday cutting purlins, getting everything ready for today, and we're gonna start, uh, go up with the first truss. The ground's still frozen, um, so that's good. And we'll just uh, see how this uh, goes. This is going to be episode two of the framing of the Remington. So let's get to it. All right, we are trying to get everything prepared for trusses. So we got the this double LVL header up. We put one side up on the ground. The other side we just put up now on the inside. And the reason we have to have this is because there's a big window right here. So we had to separate the columns out to 10 feet. And so we will have a stub column in here, which we'll make up right now, that will carry a truss. So, and then that will be transferred into these LVLs, and then the LVLs will transfer that weight into the columns. We had to notch it quarter inch, because this uh, house is getting interior 2x4 girts. Um, so that will match the 2x lumber. These LVLs are actually an inch and three quarters. We also got all my first set of truss ties screwed into the 6x6, six six. so we're all ready to go there. We got that double LDL all ready to go. I got my truss locations marked there. We'll wait to mark this one until we get closer. Alright guys, so we got some stub columns right there that are nailed from both sides into these LDLs. That's just so our truss has something to set in. We have one there. We have one there. So I measured off the end to eight foot center, and then again another eight foot center, and that matches over there on the header of the porch. So now we're going to mark this end truss up for the purlins, put it up, nail it up, then we'll prepare our second truss. And one thing different about this that uh, we've uh, you've never seen us do is we're doing dropped. This building calls for dropped purlins, and I'll explain that when we get to it. Um, the end truss actually sits three and a half inches lower than the rest of the commons, and that way there will be hangers on the commons, and then you will obtain your overhang um, by going past the end truss because it's three and a half inches lower. It'll get purlin nailed down through it. And then this has 18 inch overhang, so we'll go, let's see, uh, 16 and a half inches past. Two by fascia board gives us our 18. That side has to sit flush. This side sits an inch and a half, so I'm gonna get up and kind of pull it. How does that look? All right, well, we'll just, we'll nail this, and then we'll kind of push that. You know what the best part of this is, Justin? I don't have to hand nail these all in. That's the best part. Inch and a half. Boy, that's nice. We're good, Jake. 
just gonna put a nail in this to hold it. I just put a couple in just to hold it. Okay. Now let's uh, let's get the straps and suck that in because I might have to lift just a little bit to get it up on that ledge. I don't know. All right, strap yours in, Jake. I'm pleased with how this went so far. All right, got the first one up, went pretty good. Um, second one's ruddy except for there's a couple spots where I couldn't nail these brackets where it's laying down. So I'm gonna lift it up, carry it over there, and then we'll finish nailing off these brackets. And then we'll put this one up and hopefully get our first bay done here in the next hour. All right, guys, I know this takes extra time, but we're gonna mark all of our ceiling joists while we have this truss down where it's easy to get at. And here is the detail. Um, so there's gonna be a two by four flat that gets uh, nailed into the top interior girt. So I'm gonna measure out an inch and three quarter, and then I'm gonna start my 24 on center measurements. And uh, this should go pretty fast, but then it's all marked and we're not trying to do this over our head at nine feet. Got this is your exterior girt. Yep. The truss sticks over even with that. So that's seven and a quarter. You have to have an inch and a half for your interior girt. So seven and a quarter, that's eight and a quarter, that's eight and three quarter inches. Eight and three quarter, we kind of come back. That's the girt, interior girt. And then there's a three and a half, so then a three and a half inch two by four will lay on flat and get screwed into that. Mark 24 from here. So if I put that there, what is the, so 24 is the center. So that's the leading edge right there. So what, from the end, what is our measurement? 32. So strike this and put an X right there. Just hold on that and we'll pull 24 across. So that's 32, right? Yep. From the end. We don't want the, we don't want the drywallers mad at us. So that's 32, so just hold right there and then I'll pull 24 all the way across. Should use my big tape, it'd probably be easier. You... 
I suppose I could have lifted it up a little further. All right guys, we have a really nice day today, 47 sunny, basically no wind. So we're gonna try to get the rest of the trusses except for the end one done. And like I said before, we're using dropped purlin. So um, we have basically like an eight, just under eight foot two by four that's gonna fit in between the two trusses and they're gonna be flush with the top. A um, Couple of the questions were, why do you have to use this? Well, one, that's the way this uh, house was engineered is for drop purlins. Um, one of the benefits of drop purlins is they are structurally more sound, they're stronger. Um, they do take more time. You have to put hangers on, you have to hand drive nails. So there are some pros and cons to them. Um, I like purlins that go over the top of the trusses and then use 60D nails down through the trusses. That is plenty strong for a home. That's the way my home's built. That's the way most buildings are built and a lot of even post frame homes. So. Um, the reason I'm using this 
is because this is the way it was engineered. This is the first time I've ever done it because of the extra time that it takes. Um, but I'm glad I'm getting to do it so I can now speak from experience about what it takes to do this. If it, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? And I'll tell you that when we get to the end. All right, guys, we went to put these uh, drop purlins in. And one thing that I've been uh, cognizant of is those brackets, I was a little nervous that each truss would kind of shrink that space between each one, which we then we'd grow, if that makes sense. So this truss, we need to cut about 3 eighths off of these purlins to get back to where we need to be because we're gaining about an eighth inch of distance on each truss, with it, which isn't much, but if we let it go all the way to the other end, our end truss would be kind of leaning out and we don't want that. So we're just gonna crack these middle uh, purlins and then we'll just keep checking and uh, make sure, make any adjustments we have. I was a little nervous cutting all the purlins first because I was worried about that, but I guess you live and learn. Be able to lasso this truss. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, a lot shorter distance there, though. We won't tell anybody. You wanna come up here and do it? <laughs> Give her a shot. on this last end wall so we can put our last truss up. And we, if you can see, we really don't have enough room to build this wall on the ground. So we stood all these posts up, secured them, and we're just building it in place and it's actually going really good. The only downside is we're missing, you can go Jake. The only downside is we're missing two universal brackets for these corners. This is the garage door opening. So in order for us to put these up before we get these brackets, 
Um, this opening is for a 16 foot door, so it's actually 16 foot three inches. I got my green treated here. The post will sit right inside, so I went ahead and fastened this to the concrete. Got our grade board fast to it, so we get that post in there and then get it all buttoned up. Then when I get these brackets, we can just put them in. Um, but it's just the way it is. Sometimes you have to build the way you don't want to to make it work. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the trusses, grade board. We used drop per purlins on our trusses. If you have any more questions on those, leave them in the comments. We used a 2 by 12 treated grade board on this building. Um, but if you guys haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button, and we will catch you on the next video.